Dr. Ya Qingzhang, President of Baidu, welcome to CGTN. Nice to be here. Great to have you, sir. You've been talking about artificial intelligence for quite some years. This is really coming to the golden period of time. Absolutely, yeah. But Ya Qin, is this really the golden period or actually the warring states period in which everyone wants to jump into this field? Well, you know, it's certainly a very interesting and exciting time of uh, you know, AI. It's, uh, it's like the, the Wild West. <laughs> it's a golden rush. <laughs> and if you, you know, go to Silicon Valley, you, know, you come to Beijing, uh, essentially everywhere you know, people talk about you know, AI. So it is, it is getting real. Mm. You know, having said that, we are in the very beginning of uh, unleash the full potential of AI. Uh, there are a lot of uh, applications already you know, leveraging the technologies of AI. You know, for example, voice recognition, you know, picture recognition, mm -hmm. and natural language, and even in uh, terms of driving and, uh, and fintech, you know, there's a lot of uh, real applications. We're going to go into some detailed discussion about all of those fields, but let me ask you about this. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Warren State's period of time, or the yeah. gold rush, the competition is extremely intense. Yes. But what is the nature of this competition, Ya Qian? Mm -hmm. Is it about the talent, or is mm -hmm. it about business model, mm -hmm. or is it about something else, the technology itself? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's all of above, but, but fundamentally, it is the talent. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at it, you know, uh, the AI is all the algorithms are developed by smart people. Mm. Uh, people who understand the mathematics, people who understand the computer science, and people who understand the particular you know, domain of applications. So talent is uh, the most important thing of this whole you know, battle or competition. Talent flow, that's just normal. Right? Yes. People come in and go. You know, we, we have people left, we also have a lot of people join us. For example, Chilu, who just joined us a few, six months ago, is uh, you know, one of the top the business leaders and the technical leaders in AI. And I'm very happy with uh, the talent we have and we continue to attract uh, top talents. Uh, Attracting the world. and keeping the talent, what do you think is the nature of this competition? What would get them to stay and what would get them to come over? Yeah, well, you know, for Baidu or for any company, mm -hmm. right, the most critical thing is that people come here, they can do interesting work, or they can change the world. Uh, I mean, that's why they come here and that's uh, why they stay. Uh, and if you look at the type of work we do, it's just super exciting. Mm. Financial field, it seems to be a pretty much a battleground for a yes. lot of the big Chinese names. If you look at uh, the whole financial industry, mm. right, consumer loan and you know, asset management, uh, you know, those are uh, you know, things that, that people really need on their day-to-day -day, day -day life. Mm. And it's uh, important for uh, companies like Baidu uh, to uh, enable uh, that tra transactions in a dependable and uh, secure and reliable manner. Because we have a lot of data. We have uh, consumer data. We understand their behavior. You know, we can use uh, deep learning to acquire uh, customers, to match people with uh, the right. right type of products, to match uh, the different kind of needs. But there is some murky also, water here because of the policy. I mean, when it comes to financial services, right. there is some very blurred lines. Right. So it could go this way in right. favor of right. your companies and mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. It could go the other way around. So there's always a danger and uncertainty there. Right. Well, it is. But fundamentally, the technology can help reduce risks you know, to fight uh, frauds and to make uh, the entire uh, consumer loan uh, and the spending a lot more transparent. You know, if you look at the internet, it's all about transparency. Mm. And AI is to make sure you know, we can leverage all those data and find the, the right type of analytics, insights, uh, so the whole transaction you know, will be more secure and reliable. So overall, you know, what internet does is make sure you know, there is uh, a openness and transparency, mm. uh, but obviously, you know, with the right kind of privacy and the security and the protection, right? and it also make sure you know there is a symmetry for users, different users and organizations. And a part of the financial issue, all the other applications, because uh, sometimes you know, one group of people, they actually have a privilege over the other groups. That's right. Uh, and you know, internet and AI can help. Uh, essentially to minimize 
those issues. But there's also policies. I mean, will right, that right. eventually be able to transform policy into right, the right. absolute transparency? Right. You actually, I think, make a great point in terms of uh, the policy internet AI. Uh, some of our policy and regulations are behind, <laughs> uh, and, and we need to uh, you know, innovate, not mm. only in technology, but also in, in policy. Uh, for example, you know, in the uh, transfer driving, uh, you know, in fact, our policy are behind where technology you know, is, is moving. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, you make a great point. You know, there's a privacy issue, there's a security issue, right. there's uh, also a lot of data uh, in the probability uh, and also the regulation regarding uh, legislation AI. as well. Right. But when you look at the Chinese internet and tech giants like Baidu, like yeah. Tencent, right. some say, well, China is the latecomer and therefore mm. there probably is some disadvantage, even mm. though you are all catching up and probably right. becoming the world's biggest. Mm -hmm. but. On the other hand, you also enjoy the advantage that the policies mm -hmm. are favoring mm -hmm. Chinese companies mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to entering into the Chinese market, for example. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of this uh, quote-unquote advantage plus disadvantage? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what would it mean, the competitiveness, mm -hmm. for a tech giant like Baidu okay. when the policies are being mm -hmm. drafted in mm -hmm. the current way? Mm -hmm. well, you know, f first of all, uh, the competition in uh, China's internet space is more you know, fierce, more intense than any other place in the world. It's actually more competitive than U.S. You know, if you look at, uh, let's say, of search, you, know, you asked me a question about search. There are more search engines in China mm. than in U.S. Uh, Baidu has search, you know, Soho has search, 360 has search, you know, uh, Bing is here. In the PC internet era, China pretty much uh, you know, followed the uh, US in terms of uh, technology and also business model. And in the mobile internet area, China actually leapfrogged the US. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the technologies are still similar, but in terms of the product experience, in China actually you know, has uh, taken lead. Uh, for example, all the sharing economy, you know, the digital and the payments. That's right. Uh, including some of uh, the search experience, especially regarding the, uh, you know, the uh, connectivity to services. So China actually, uh, in, in this uh, area, China actually has taken some lead. Mm. Uh, AI, we're getting into the you know, AI uh, revolution, and China, I believe, has a chance to lead, not only in product, but also in technology and research. How come? Uh, because, uh, first of all, this is relatively new. And China has a large base, right. uh, and China has a lot of uh, you know, data coming uh, collected from uh, the mobile internet, absolutely, and and also the immense uh, uh, market opportunity, and also I want to mention uh, the uh, ability to embrace new technologies, especially for uh, the traditional industry, uh, is a key advantage. If you talk with uh, you know, any uh, you know, stores, store owners. Uh, you talk with uh, you know, manufacturing right. you know, companies. So you actually want to use new technology. So that is amazing. But the competition, as you said, is fearful, right? It is. It I is. mean, even if when you talk about search, you see there are already in more than That's enough right. search engines. That's right. That's right. Not to mention Tencent also developed their That's own right. search function right. for Which their is WeChat. Good. Which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, and let people you know, mm. choose and let the market decide mm. uh, you know, the best uh, one way. Same thing in all the other areas. Mm. I think you know, China needs to continue that path, making sure the policies uh, the regulation are uh, actually uh, have a playing, uh, even playing field, uh, so all companies can prosper. That's what you're looking for. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For for AI, it's the same thing. For AI, I believe you know, openness is important. You know, we haven't talked about that, but for a for AI, it is important to open a lot of uh, the algorithms, source code, right. and data. Uh, that's what Baidu is doing. If you look at it, we actually going to open. We all have already <laughs> opened. Uh, our uh, deep learning platform called mm. Pedal Pedal. We just uh, open sourced our uh, autonomous driving platform, uh, Apollo. So that you know, has the software and the hardware and data and cloud services. 
So basically, you know, we can acceler accelerate the innovation mm. in this, uh, this space. Talking about governments, yeah. there are also, in other countries, there mm. are concerns that mm. the Chinese companies, like mm. Baidu, like mm. Tencent, are getting mm. all the latest technologies from their research lab. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the United States, some were suggesting maybe we should have a policy mm -hmm. that would ban the mm -hmm. Chinese companies, mm -hmm. Taijans particularly, to cooperate with our research lab. Mm -hmm. We don't want our top advanced mm -hmm. AI technology going all the way to China. Uh -huh. right. I just wonder, right. as someone who has been in the tech world for a long time, working right. both for Chinese and American businesses. Right. What do you make of this? Yeah, uh, that's uh, absolutely short-sighted. Uh, and the reason why... But the thing is, is it possible? Well, it is impossible. To, there, there's no border in technology. Uh, and if you look at you know, the success of the United States with uh, you know, openness, was able to uh, assemble uh, the top scientists around the world, you know, in its universities and in, you know, in the industry. Yeah. Uh, in including the, Chinese including ones. Including Chinese ones. You exactly. were educated also in I the was, United that, States. That, that's true. And I worked for Microsoft that's for right. 16 years. That's right. right. Um, and you know, a lot of uh, the things the U.S. built today are uh, based on some of uh, the contributions of immigrants, of uh, worldwide talents. And uh, China needs to do the same thing. And I think China has been quite you know, open in the last uh, 30 years, especially last 10 years, mm -hmm. you're attracting talents. We need to do more, right? not only attracting talents. Before we go, I do want to ask you. Right. You seem to enjoy yourself. Absolutely, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. I love my job. Every time when I saw you, <laughs> yeah. uh, whether it is at World Economic Forum, winter yeah. or summer, yeah. or even at a time when your work as mm. the head of an organization mm. has been meeting certain tremendous challenges. Yes. I just wonder how do you originally an engineer uh -huh. transform yourself uh -huh. as someone uh -huh. who will be able to handle all of this uh -huh. mm -hmm. at the same time. Just think yeah. about how fast the world is right. changing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, we are in a very exciting time as an engineer and a scientist. You know, I have Every time the, you told me that. <laughs> yeah, I have the privilege very exciting of uh, time. You know, doing different things. Mm -hmm. right? you know, every, in fact, you know, I see probably more things than most people because uh, you know, I work as uh, a scientist in the lab. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, some of the things we see today uh, actually exist in lab probably you know, 15, 20 years ago. That's right. uh, so I get to you know, work with a lot of smart people, uh, work on things uh, that uh, sometimes you know, may change the world. Uh, so I'm, I'm always uh, you know, excited just to see those things uh, being uh, invented and being applied. The other thing is, you know, as an engineer, a scientist, you know, my job is to discover a problem and to solve them. Right? <laughs> so you so enjoy the process. Right. So, so whether it's a technical issue, mm. or it's a people issue, it's an organizational issue, or a business issue, it's the same thing. Is people issue more difficult? It is more difficult, but if you treat that as an engineering problem, hmm. uh, then you will say, well, you know, there's Can you a do logic. That? Yes, as an engineering problem? Yes, it is. Yeah. Everything is an uh, engineering issue, and everything is about algorithm. <laughs> You just need to find a way to fix that. I'm glad you have always found a way to fix that. I hope so. Ya yeah, Qingjiang, President of Baidu, what a pleasure to have you. Thank you so nice much for being here. with us. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs>